want y'all to say, Lord, Lord speak, to me speak to me right now, right now. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, in order to build a home, there is one thing that we are going to need above all other things. More important than the money that we're going to put down or purchase the house with. More important than the neighborhood. More important than the bricks and mortar that we're going to use. More important than the shingles that we're going to hang. More important than the drywall that we're going to pick up. And, and, and more important than the tapestry that we put in the kitchen. You know, I don't know if you've ever had a house built, but whenever you have a house built, you have to pick out every little thing in the house. What color and type of chandelier you're going to have in this room? What type of light cover do you want in this room? What, what kind of door handle? I do not care about a door handle. But you've got to pick out every single thing. But there is one thing that you're going to need that is more important than all of those things put together. That one thing is blueprints. Say blueprints. blueprints. See, without proper blueprints, it doesn't matter how much money you have because you have not told your money what to do. Without the blueprints, the, the cement truck doesn't know which way to pour the cement. Without the blueprints, anything that you're going to do will fail. Blueprints. Say blueprints. blueprints. Pastor Watch, we, we've been talking about what does love look like? What does is, what is love look What does blueprints have to do with love? It has a whole lot to do with love. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians 5 and 25. Ephesians 5 and 25. We're, we're still talking about what does love, love look like, and today we're talking about what does love look like in a marriage, part two. Say part two. Part two. Part two. I feel sorry for any woman that did not have her husband in church on today. You might want to just share this with somebody. on. I'm telling you, this is going to be good. You, some of y'all not married yet. You need to get this on tape. And give it to your future husband. I need you to listen to this before you get ready to propose so you can understand some things. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 25. Turn to it or click to it or swipe to it. Um, if you're looking for Ephesians, go to Philippians and go back one. Amen. If you're looking for Ephesians 5, just go to Ephesians 4 and keep going. Amen. You keep going, you'll get to 5. It's actually there. Now, if you're trying to get to 7, uh, you might not make it. But if you're trying to get to 5... You can get there. If y'all have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Say, husbands love your wives. Husbands, husbands love your wives. Hub, husbands, I could just really use that first part. I don't even need the whole sentence on today. Husbands love your wives. What, is, what does love look like in a marriage? And I'm talking to, to, to husbands and future husbands and, and wives of future husbands today so you can understand what you're looking for. Husbands love your wife. Here is Paul writing to the folks in, uh, in Ephesus to this church and he's giving instructions on how a marriage should be set up. Now whenever we have instructions for how something should be set up we can call that a blueprint. Amen? And, and this blueprint in, uh, in words is so simple, it's so small. Husbands, comma, love your wives, semicolon. It's such a simple thing. It's easy, right? It's just, a, it's easy. Husbands, love your wives. And then he went on, just in case you can, got it confused, even as Christ loved the church. What does love look like in the marriage, man? What, is it, what does it look like? And, and so... For us to understand thoroughly what it looks like, we've got to understand the whole totality of things. Because whenever we talk about what love looks like, you know when we don't have to have that conversation? On somebody's wedding day? I have never had to do counseling or training on a wedding day. Everybody's excited. They're happy. You know, I told my wife, we've done, I don't know, probably hundreds and hundreds of weddings. And 
it, it is something about that day. I've never seen a bride not glowing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a bride not beautiful on that wedding day. Now I've met with some of these couples and I've seen some fiancés that ain't too appealing. Mm -hmm. Something happens on that wedding day. They just begin to glow. I don't know what it is but it is phenomenal to sit and watch. That man standing out there, brushing his shoulders in that nice suit with his best man standing next to him. Oh, you can't tell him nothing that day. Oh, he's the man. And so, whenever they get ready to exchange vows, it's usually a similar type of exchange. The preacher or the priest or whoever's marrying them will give them instructions on what to say to each other. Do you take this woman to have and to hold and to love and to cherish and to put forth and before all others, forsaking everybody else? Do you agree to do that? And usually the common answer is what? I do. Say it again. I do. I do. I do. I do. We even, we, we even take that term and make it synonymous with the marriage nuptials, the I do. I do. Me and my wife, if you go in our house, um, the, the, there's an organization that did something really, really cool for us, Dennis Rainey and Family Life. They, they took our marriage nuptials and our names and everything and, 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 and the date that our marriage was established, September 30th, 1995, and they wrote up a large thing on, on, some, on some, uh, some wood actually and carved it out and painted it out and on it it says, I still do. Isn't that cool? I still do. But what happens when I do turns into I don't? See, I don't hear any I don'ts on the wedding day. But sometimes later on, you hear that I don't. Pastor, I don't love her anymore. Pastor, I don't like him anymore. I don't want to come home to him anymore. And the I do turns to I don't. What then? Y'all ever seen an I don't in a marriage? Mm -hmm. Say amen. Amen. I know I've seen some I don'ts. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be married no more. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way she walks no more. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way she looks anymore. I don't like the way he treats me. What do you do when I do turns to I don't. What does love look like in that situation? Can we be real here today at the Love Church? Y'all thinking, I want to know, Pastor. Some of y'all ain't been married before. It's like, really? It turns into I don't? For real? Nobody told me that. Am I ready for the I don't? I thought I was ready for the I do's. Whenever you I do, I don't is coming. For all the married people and folks that've been married, say amen. amen. There's an I don't on the way. <laughs> Every day ain't I do. I love my wife. I've always loved my wife. I've been knowing her for 26 years. She's good looking to me. I like her. I got four kids on purpose. Amen. amen. It was not an accident. <laughs> it was not an accident. <laughs> We've been married for 22 of those 26 years. And we have a good marriage. Do you know sometimes she don't like me? I know it's hard to believe. I get it, I, I get it, I get it. I get it. it usually don't last long, but there's some times she would rather not have me around. I, she, she's not gonna tell me, but I can feel it. She don't really like me right now. Sometimes I'll think something is just a little too funny. She don't like that. She's like, that is not, that's not funny to me. That's not, I don't really like you right now. What happens when the I do's turn to I don'ts? What do you do? What does love look like in that situation? Well, sometimes it's easy to talk about what love don't look like. You know what love don't look like? It, it, it doesn't look like pain. Having a duck and 
get your feelings hurt and talking bad about somebody. That's not love. Oh, Pastor Washington, she know I'm just joking with her. No, man, you called her fat and ugly. That's not, that ain't no joking in that. That's mean. And you're trying to figure out why she don't respect you. She don't respect me. You call her fat every day. Man, I'm trying to help her get in shape. No, you're not. You're helping to destroy your wife. That's not presenting her back to you without spot or blemish. Like the Bible says. Well, I'm just keeping it real. What if Jesus kept it real with you? and told you about yourself. He gave you a quick glimpse in here when the Bible says your righteousness, the, the best you can do when you're on the top of your game is like a filthy rag. You gonna wipe your face with a filthy rag? No. Nah. Imagine, imagine taking a rag, and I'm not going to get too graphic because I, I could, but imagine taking a rag, putting it in some mud, taking it out, allowing 16 trucks to roll over it, taking it and put it in gasoline, then go to the zoo, follow an elephant, pick up the elephant's excrement, and then wash with that rag without cleaning it. Anybody want to do that? Uh, imagine what that rag would look like. And even if it started white, is it still going to be white? No. Even if it started smelling good and you put all the different things on there, the perfumes and everything to make it smell great, after picking up gasoline and elephant dung, it's not going to smell like roses. Imagine what it looks like. Imagine what that would smell like. You don't even want to get close to that rag. That's what your righteousness is like. Mm -hmm. Mr. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mrs. I don't do anything wrong ever. So, so what, if, what if God just said, let me just show you the mirror on you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and and let, me, let me help you with something. Because if we read through this Bible well, we can see where Jesus knew the thoughts of people. So not only to turn the mirror on you and the things that you've done and said, let's look at the things you didn't thought about. Anybody signing up for that? Quiet in here. Who? So, so you saying that Oh, my wife is this, and she don't do this, and Pastor, you don't understand, I would do this if this was the case. Well, Jesus don't treat you like that. He didn't say, I'm going to wait for you to be perfect, and then I'm going to save you. What, what does it say that? I, I, I've yet to see that in the Bible. Once you become perfect, then you get to heaven. If only perfect people made it to heaven, heaven would have one inhabitant, Jesus Christ. Your butt would not be there. My butt would not be there. We all be burning together. But thank God for salvation. Amen. Amen. We talked about what is what does love look like from God? It looks like salvation. Love is not painful. It doesn't criticize like that. Let me talk bad about you. Oh, she knows I love her. No, no, no. You're proving that you don't. See, love is an action word. It's not a feeling. Right. See, if, if, if I take Isaiah and I say, Isaiah, come here, man. I, I got some cookies for you. And when he get close, I just slap him upside the head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just kidding, man. Come on back. I got some cookies for you. Pow! Backhand on the other side. Got to keep my backhand strong. <laughs> Oh, he know I love him. No, he don't. Neither do his temples that you keep hitting them in. <laughs> That's not what love looks like. And we, we're, we're laughing about it, but we see men that want to put their hands on their woman and they say, I love you, though. That's not what love looks like. Oh, you know, I only hit them on Thursdays. I let her get six good days in. And Thursdays, you know, sometimes I get a little upset. You know, Friday come in, Thursdays, I'm pretty much broke. I'm upset. You know, I get home. She done done something stupid. Got to smack him around a little bit. That's not love. 
Love does not look like that. Man. Love is not ignorant to somebody else's pain and suffering and, and, and even the things that they would love. Love is not ignoring your partner. That's not what love is. I'm just going to ignore. And let me tell you something, that's outside of marriage, by the way, that's any relationship you have, whether it's father, son, mother, daughter, friends, church folk, ignoring people is not what love looks like. Imagine that, that I see Sister Johnson and I, I, I go over her house and she's laying down on the porch, bleeding and crying. And I look at her and I say, hey, you got anything to eat in there? You got something to drink? I ain't there to drink. You not gonna ask me? Ah, oh, you tripping. I just gone in here finding myself. <laughs> and I step over her crying and bleeding and go fix me a sandwich in her kitchen. <laughs> well, you know, they need to feed the pastor, you know. <laughs> need to feed the pastor. Bring me a cup of water. Get your profits. Reward. <laughs> The Bible has a prerequisite for even you could say, well, I'm doing this scripture and I'm doing that scripture. And the Bible says she should do good. It said if you don't have love, you don't have nothing. It said you can speak in the language, in the tongue of men and angels. But if you don't have love, you have absolutely nothing. You know, it's been said that people don't care what you know till they know how much you care. How are you going to preach to people you don't care about? And I'm not talking about just from a pastor perspective. If you got somebody in your life that won't listen to you, it's probably because they don't know that you care. If they know you care, they'll come around after a while. Now, does love look tough sometimes? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it might look like putting your son out the house because you love him. He ain't trying to hurt him. You praying for him every day. <laughs> Lord, please don't kill him. But it doesn't criticize. It doesn't ignore. That's not love. Say that's not love. That's not love. That's not love. So what is love? What, is, what does it look like? What does love look like in marriage? What is it? And, and this, once again, really transcends marriage. I know we're talking to, to what does love look like in a marriage specifically, but it really transcends those things. And it starts off with, what do you do? Say, what do you do? What do you do? What are you doing? When people come to me and they say, you know, Pastor Washington, we've just fell out of love. We just, we just fell. You know what I tell them? Well, get up. Get back in love. We can't just get back in love. Well, you got in love. You got out of love. Get back in it. <laughs> or did you think love was that lustful feeling y'all was feeling when y'all first got married? You thought that was love? No, nah, that ain't love. Because God has never lusted after me. But he's loved me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? No, that's not. That's, that's Eros. That's different. Mm -hmm. He may have fell out of Eros because she don't look the same. He ain't fell out of love. Mm -hmm. Because love is an action word. It's a verb. It's what you do. Say what you do. You know, whenever we go out to a hotel somewhere, anywhere in the world, my wife does something that's really, really cool, right? And for whatever reason, I forget every single time. So every time is like the first time it ever happened. It's such a cool thing, right? I'll go in the shower. And you know how the shower heats up and everything and there's steam everywhere, you know, so I do that. Now, I like, I like just taking showers and just letting the water hit me for about 10 hours, it seems like, you know. Especially when you're in a hotel, like the hot water don't stop. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's good and you're not paying for it, so it don't really make a difference. Like, you just let it go. Sometimes at the house, you're like, man, this, this is costing me. But like, when you're at a hotel, it don't make a difference at all. So it's just hitting you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And, and, and it never fails. You know, I turn the water off and I, you know, put the curtain back and there's a message written on the, on the mirror. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a wonderful thing. It's a, just a little thing. Mm -hmm. It makes me all just warm and fuzzy inside. That's something she does. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. If I go look on my mirror, she'll write me notes on my mirror mm -hmm. in Sharpies. 
you the man. I remember one time she she drew, I don't know how long it took her to get this right, but she she drew a little Superman symbol. And it was perfect, because when I come up in the mirror, it was like right on my chest, <laughs> Superman. You, boy, when I tell you, you couldn't tell me nothing that day. <laughs> I went to work like, yeah. <laughs> The one you ready to start the meeting? Hold on. Y'all see that, right? I see it. Yeah. You know, I, I understand why now men will say, I, captains of industry and uh, billionaires and people who have done phenomenal things, people who have been phenomenal presidents, you'll hear them say one thing. It's like, oh, that's, that's my wife. I've met a gentleman who actually taught both Obamas in, at Harvard. He was their professor, and he said, oh, without a shadow of a doubt, Michelle is definitely smarter. She's the smarter of the two. Mm -hmm. I remember there's, there's a story, and I don't, I don't know how true it is or not. Hopefully it is, because it makes for a really good story, where they were out, the Obamas were out, um, just kind of having a cool little day, and they ran across an ice cream shop. Um, and uh, the owner of the ice cream shop had requested to talk with Michelle privately. And she granted him the request. It was kind of weird. And so um, Barack came back and asked and said, what was that about? I said, oh, well, that was, that was my boyfriend years ago in high school, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's telling jokes. He's like, oh, I bet you're glad you didn't marry him. You know, you'd be like the ice cream queen. <laughs> she said, if I married him, he'd be president. <laughs> Somebody that knows their worth. Yeah. That's what love looks like. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. do, do, you, do you go to the store and say, you know what? I just, I just want to get something to make my wife smile today. Let me see. What would she like? Would she, li would she like some Hershey's with a little bow around it? Um, how about some bath salt? You know, what, what? Are you thinking about that? Do, do you ever go into your computer and just start searching for places in the world that your wife would just love to go? <laughs> the Maldives. I thought he said the Aldi. No, she. <laughs> like, uh... I know what she said <laughs> because I love her on purpose. <laughs> she said the Maldives. Okay. <laughs> Amen. All right. I know which cabana to take her to, right there on the water. Amen. We go to Jamaica, I know what house to rent because the back don't have a back to it. It just goes right out to the ocean. Amen. We go to Dubai, I know what hotel to take her to. Look like a sail. I throw in a little island, seven star hotel. Why? Because I love her on purpose. Amen. Amen. Can I do better? Yup. Am I going to be better tomorrow? Yup. I'll be better next week. Amen. Amen. Because that's an everlasting process. We'll call it ever loving process. Mm -hmm. You never reach the pinnacle. Oh, I have loved enough. I've reached the pinnacle of love. I've arrived. <laughs> I was watching a movie one time and this dude was like, man, I did it. He said, what? He said, I beat yoga. You beat yo You beat it? Like, what? I didn't know it was a race. You beat, you got there first. Like, what is that? You, be, you conquered it? You can't. You can't. And if you're not more flexible. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And, and so, for whatever reason, we don't realize that what we do equals the love. I fell out of love. We'll fall back in. Get up. Do these things. I don't want to do those things. Then you don't love her. I don't think I should have to. Jesus died on the cross for your stupid stuff. I'm not asking you to get nailed on a cross for your wife's stupid stuff. Oh, and by the way, he didn't do anything wrong. Your butt doing something wrong right now. You probably need to be on a cross dying right now for the stuff you already did. I don't want to. Can I help you with just a little bit of information here? Just a little bit. If you allow me to just dive into this text for a moment and just listen to the words of Jesus Christ himself. And let me just enlighten you with one piece of information that I don't know if you're familiar with. Jesus didn't want to. Amen. Let that sink in. He did not want to go to the cross. I got Bible for that. He went to God three times saying, can we do this different? Yep. I'll tell you, we're going to write a ghetto Bible. 
It's going to say it all. The, see, if we, if we read the Bible, it says he prayed, that, God, if there's any way this cup could pass for me. Three times. Prayed it hard, too. Harder than you've ever prayed in your life. I promise you. We're going to rewrite that. Hey, God, uh, can we change this up? Because I'm cool with not doing this. We can do this a different way. All right? No? Nah? Uh, God, let me talk to you one more time. Uh, let me holler at you. I know you want me to, you know, do the whole ah, ah thing. But uh, I'm letting you know. If you decide to do something different, mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. You know, I don't, I don't got to. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> hey, God, one more time. Let me, let me uh, <laughs> make sure you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. I'm tight with you now. Whew, yeah, we cool. We tight. <laughs> we tight. I'm on your right hand. You know, I am literally your right hand man. Right here. <laughs> you know, I could do this differently. But if you want me to keep it like it is, you know, and not switch up the game plan, I'm going to do that. He never said, I'm cool with it. He said, nevertheless, your will be done. In other words, if you decide not to change your mind, I'll go through with it. He did not want to go. So I don't want to hear you say, well, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't think I have to be the first one to forgive. Uh, and you know what I tell people? then you don't want God to forgive you. In the middle of his prayer, he said, you know what? I'm going to forgive you as long as you forgive other people. If you don't forgive other people, I'm not going to forgive you. It goes both ways. Do good. The Bible says we should even do good to those that hate us. You know that's even in your family? We forget that. Because sometimes your wife hates you. Sometimes you might hate her. It ain't good, but it happens. Do good to them do good you know me and my wife we don't we don't argue much we don't fight much at all you know we just too silly for that to happen I guess um, but every now and then when I get upset a little bit or she'll get upset like I said it lasts for about eight minutes because I'm gonna do something stupid I'm gonna come and tackle her and tickle her or something and she gonna come do the same with me so it's not gonna last long we're gonna do something nice for each other no grudges are gonna be held and we have a good life for it she doesn't say, well, you know what? He's just being stupid. I don't think I should have to go and say anything. <laughs> I remember when we first got married and we were broke. Um, we were below broke. Like broke is, you know, we were, we were here. Um, and like we were just talking earlier uh, about not having a bed, like sleeping on the floor and that kind of stuff. And I remember um, I came in one day and my wife, we didn't have a bed. And she was sleeping on the floor, you know, and not complaining. You know, she was just, you know, she was cool. She was just asleep, you know, just sleeping on the floor. Made her a little pallet, you know, it was all good. As a man, that did something to me. I'm like, I got to do better. I, I have got to do better quickly, <laughs> quickly. And, and, you know, you go out and you do what you can. You sell what you can. You do it. I got to get her a bed, right? And boom, bed. I remember when we first moved back to Texas, it was funny. We had this big house built, big pretty house. But we were in transition, moving a bunch of stuff from a different state. And we had a, um, we had a, a little mattress or whatever. It wasn't even a bed. It wasn't nothing. It was like being on the floor again, right? Mm -hmm. And she was pregnant. She was loud when it came in there. I've seen her laying there, not complaining. Just, you know, just chilling, ain't saying nothing wrong. I like, I gotta do better. Mm -hmm. You know, we went out and bought a thousand dollar bed that day, right? Because I gotta love on you, mm -hmm. right? But that's two ways. Number one, she ain't laying there complaining. You ain't no real man. A real man would have had me in the bed, but now nah, you got me all on the floor. <laughs> got me on the floor. You don't love me. <laughs> Going back to my mama house. <laughs> right? She loved me enough to not criticize and hurt me. Right? I loved her enough to not want to see her in that situation. It's a two-way street. Amen. Amen. Love is about what you do. It's also about what you say. Speak life into people. Y'all, for whatever reason, this, and I thought it was big when I was young. When I was young, we called it high side. And y'all know what I'm talking about? 
you know, back before then they called it playing the dozens. Now they call it, then they call it banging for a while. Now they call it something else. I don't know what y'all call it. Y'all be talking bad about people. I don't know what y'all call Roasting. it. Oh, Roasting. Flaming. Flaming. Is that what y'all call it? <laughs> Nobody says flame. I don't know. Whatever the word is. <laughs> The Bible actually has a word for it. It calls it coarse joking. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you, you, you think that it's not having any effect and it might be. You're calling your wife nappy headed. You don't know what she heard growing up. Girl, you're just dark as night. You don't know what somebody called her growing up. You don't know. Girl, you're getting big as a house. Don't do that. Big as the broad side of a barn. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, whole barn? Whole barn. <laughs> I was going to tell a joke, but you're too fat to fit in it. Like, don't, don't. <laughs> I seen a dude one time criticize his wife's arms. I'm like, that's your wife, dude. I, I seen a husband talk so bad about the wife weight she went and had surgery and then he played off with her with a big girl. Mm. That's not love, man. Yeah. Dude, if she shot you, I'd hide the body. That's, that's how I feel about it. Like, I'd help her. <laughs> we need to learn what to say. Speak life. For whatever reason, when the Bible talks about speaking life into people and the power of, of, of the tongue holds life and death, we forget that that includes the people around us. That includes your home girl. Talk her up. That includes your wife. That includes your husband. Talk him up. You know, you the baddest dude since sliced bread. You are my Superman. You know what? They should have cast you. You know what? I think you should be the next Bond. I know they're talking about Idris Elba, but you got him beat. You have got him beat. Man, I'm, you know what? I'm going to take a picture and send it to the studios right now. Go on, flex for me. <laughs> that dude might be 618 pounds. It don't matter. He's going to feel like he's a 6'2", 250 washboard stomach that day. Because his woman talked him up. Amen? Yeah. Learn how to speak to each other. And, and probably the most important thing after we learn how to do things and learn how to speak things, what's really the most important is you learn how to think love. Because whenever you're thinking love, you're speaking it, you're doing it because it's in your mindset. Well, Pastor Washington, I want to think it, but how, how do I think it? Watch your environment, those things that you see, those things that you listen to because they're influencing the way that you think and what you think is going to be what you say and what you do. If you're around people that hate men all day, guess what you're going to end up doing? Girl, men ain't no good. They all players. I told my man, you can have one side chick. That's it. Don't, don't, don't do more than one. Now I'm okay with one. Kind of mess. But all that three and four, that's just too much. Well, what kind of mess? <laughs> because you're around that. You think that that's normal. If, if, if you're... If, <laughs> I had a horrible thought. If you are around folks that do crazy, stupid stuff all the time, you think crazy and stupid is normal. I see people that say, oh, everybody smokes weed. Everybody. Man, I don't even know where to get weed from. <laughs> I don't even know what it looked like. I was, what? Oh, everybody. No, no. Oh, everybody got at least two side chicks. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, everybody cusses folks out. No, no. Just the people you know. Yeah. Which is an indication of you need to get to know some different people. Which means that you need to go some different places. You need to hang out in some different arenas because your, your thinking has gotten stinky. You need to clean that up. Watch your environment. If you're, if you're listening to folks talk about stupid stuff all day and on the radio people talk about stupid stuff all day and then you turn on the television they're talking about some crazy junk. How you think that you're going to think? Mm -hmm. Learn how to work on that. Be, I, I like to be around good husbands, husbands that really love their wives, because they give me ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I never thought about that. 
Even It ain't even got to be that they love their wife, that they love somebody and they know how to love. I was listening to something the other day and a, a dude was talking about his sister, how his sister loved him so much that whenever she sent him messages, she would always send them in a creative way. She said one time she just wrote him all these wonderful messages in toilet paper, in a whole roll of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So when she sent it to him, he just unrolled it and just seeing all these phenomenal things that the sister wrote. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. See, y'all going to do that now. Mm -hmm. What you would I get you some toilet paper? Some toilet paper. <laughs> I remember one time my children, I can't remember if it was Christmas or birthday or something, but I, I took a bunch of one dollar bills, like a couple hundred one dollar bills, and I wrote on all of them, I wrote custom messages about who they are and hold on and all this and oh you're great, you're phenomenal. And I, and I when they opened the door, it was just a whole path. It's a whole path. And some of them kept some of those dollars. It's like, oh okay, cool. Be around people that know how to love on people. That way you'll think that. If you're around people that don't know how to love on folks, you need to get away from them people. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm there to help them. No, you're not helping them. I say it all the time, I can't take a white coat off and throw it in the dirt and make the dirt cleaner. Right. Mm -hmm. That dirt's gonna make my jacket dirty. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not helping them. Mm -hmm. If you were helping them, they'd want to be around you when you're doing something different because they wanna help themselves. If that's not the case, that's not it. So as you go throughout your relationships, I want you to think about something. What you're saying, what you're doing, what you're thinking, what your environment is teaching you how to love. Because let me tell you something. If you were born with no blueprint, you're a man born into a family with no father, woman born into a family where the, you might have a mom, but she's not a wife, don't know how to be a wife. If you are born into a situation in this world without a blueprint, it's not your fault. Some people get it, some people don't. But if you leave this planet and you don't have your blueprints, that is your fault. Because you had an option to go find those blueprints to build a phenomenal life. And God has laid out those blueprints right here in his word. Amen? Y'all give the Lord a hand clap and some praise. That is my time.